All right, so I'm doing this one today in my jammies because I slept in a little, which I can't really say I used to do that much. I mean, I'm not saying I never slept in, don't get me wrong, but it's just that ever since my treatment ended, I seem to have more need for sleep. And when I don't get it, I really feel sleep deprived and, and kind of fatigued. And I think that this is kind of one of those after effects from chemo uh, because it's just so much more so than it used to be. I mean, there are all these things that nobody tells you about because everyone's focused on the immediate thing that happens. You lose your hair. Okay, it happens, but it actually grows back, as you can see. I haven't really done it yet this morning, so I'm letting you see me without it done. Uh, as, as much as you can do to this much hair. But there are other things that I think kind of live on after you go through chemotherapy. Um, because to me, the time since my treatment, I don't know, it's been a little bit harder, actually, than during the treatment. I mean, yeah, physically you go through the, the, the side effects from chemo. But once it's over, there are all these other kind of lingering factors that I think I can attribute to the chemotherapy. Um, for instance, increased stress and anxiety. I mean, I kind of have a new perspective on stress and life and my relationships in life. And of course, stress can cause lack of sleep. And wouldn't you know it, lack of sleep can cause stress. But the problem is that these are also things that are now being attributed to risk factors for cancer. And I don't want my cancer to come back. And of course, we also know the other things that stress can cause extra pounds. So, uh, and that can also be a risk factor for cancer, extra pounds, because estrogen is stored in excess body fat. So, I mean, all these things I've learned uh, since getting breast cancer. But when it comes to stress, I'm kind of stripping down my life of any kind of stressful relationships or emotionally fueled relationships. Um, you know, I don't know, maybe it's because when you flirt with death, you say, okay, okay, I don't know exactly how long I have on this earth. So I'm going to make sure that I have amiable, meaningful business partnerships and healthy relationships with family and friends. Fortunately, I do have those healthy relationships with family and friends, but I've made some decisions in my life that I'm just not going to pursue certain areas of business that I was pursuing because it's not that much fun. Uh, and then there's just the everyday. Forget business. Just the everyday stress. I kind of feel that after chemotherapy, you lose that outer coating that you always had that allows you to let, let things roll off your back or kind of your ability to shrug off the small stuff in life. For instance, I'll tell you one. I was at a family party this last weekend, and my, it was my daughter's baby shower. And we had done this spectacular room, and then a very lovely waitress was helping to finish up the tables, and she went to get a few people drinks, and by accident, she spilled orange juice, like this long, tall thing of orange juice, all over the table. Ta everything had to be taken off. Everything had to be put on new. And we had 60 guests that were about to walk through the door in five minutes. And I remember I just kind of like tried to take a breath and I walked away and I said to my daughter, Sarah, wow, I don't really think I have the capability at this point in time to deal with really anxiety producing situations. It's like I don't have the filter. Um, and it's bothersome because I've always been kind of the cool, calm, collected, stoic, don't worry about anything kind of girl. So, you know, everybody talks about how tough it is going through treatment, but I'm going to really be honest with you. I'm going to tell you that the most, most emotionally difficult time for me, I think, has been since my last day of treatment, and especially my last day of treatment. Like, I totally had, like, an emotional breakdown that day. Um, and I kind of want to know. Are any of you experiencing things like this? I mean, where did that outer coating go? Uh, I'd like to know if it's just kind of aging 
and maybe this all would have happened anyway, or if it's post-chemo. And there are a few other things, like I'm thirsty all the time. I don't mean like the old thirsty, but my new normal is intensely thirsty. I keep water everywhere, and I'm freezing cold all the time. I don't know. Is it the chemo, or is it age-related? Um, I'd love for you guys to leave some comments in the comment section and kind of like, let's get this conversation started, because I need some help here, lady. I need to know that others are feeling this too. Is it the chemo, or is it just getting older?